Angiogenesis, Wikipedia article audio. Angiogenesis is the physiological process through which new blood vessels form from pre-existing vessels. In precise usage this is distinct from vasculogenesis, which is the de novo formation of endothelial cells from mesoderm cell precursors, and from neovascularization, although discussions are not always precise. The first vessels in the developing embryo form through vasculogenesis, after which angiogenesis is responsible for most, if not all, blood vessel growth during development and in disease. Angiogenesis is a normal and vital process in growth and development, as well as in wound healing and in the formation of granulation tissue. However, it is also a fundamental step in the transition of tumors from a benign state to a malignant one, leading to the use of angiogenesis inhibitors in the treatment of cancer. The essential role of angiogenesis in tumor growth was first proposed in 1971 by Judah Folkman, who described tumors as hot and bloody, illustrating that, at least for many tumor types, flush perfusion and even hyperemia are characteristic types sprouting angiogenesis sprouting angiogenesis was the first identified form of angiogenesis it occurs in several well characterized stages first Biological signals known as angiogenic growth factors activate receptors on endothelial cells present in pre-existing blood vessels. Second, the activated endothelial cells begin to release enzymes called proteases that degrade the basement membrane to allow endothelial cells to escape from the original vessel walls. The endothelial cells then proliferate into the surrounding matrix and form solid sprouts connecting neighboring vessels. As sprouts extend toward the source of the angiogenic stimulus, endothelial cells migrate in tandem, using adhesion molecules called INTE grins. These sprouts then form loops to become a full-fledged vessel lumen as cells migrate to the site of angiogenesis. Sprouting occurs at a rate of several millimeters per day, and enables new vessels to grow across gaps in the vasculature. It is markedly different from splitting angiogenesis because it forms entirely new vessels as opposed to splitting existing vessels. By intussusception, also known as splitting angiogenesis, a new blood vessel is created by splitting of an existing blood vessel in two. Intussusception was first observed in neonatal rats. In this type of vessel formation, the capillary wall extends into the lumen to split a single vessel in two. There are four phases of intussusceptive angiogenesis. First, the two opposing capillary walls establish a zone of contact. Second, the endothelial cell junctions are reorganized and the vessel bilayer is perforated to allow growth factors and cells to penetrate into the lumen. Third, a core is formed between the two new vessels at the zone of contact that is filled with pericytes and myofibroblasts. These cells begin laying collagen fibers into the core to provide an extracellular matrix for growth of the vessel lumen. Finally, the core is fleshed out with no alterations to the basic structure. Intussusception is important because it is a reorganization of existing cells. It allows a vast increase in the number of capillaries without a corresponding increase in the number of endothelial cells. This is especially important in embryonic development as there are not enough resources to create a rich microvasculature with new cells every time a new vessel develops. Mechanical stimulation of angiogenesis is not well characterized. There is a significant amount of controversy with regard to shear stress acting on capillaries to cause angiogenesis although current knowledge suggests that increased muscle contractions may increase angiogenesis. 
This may be due to an increase in the production of nitric oxide during exercise. Nitric oxide results in vasodilation of blood vessels. Intussusceptive angiogenesis Chemical stimulation of angiogenesis is performed by various angiogenic proteins e.g.int egrins and prostaglandins, including several growth factors e.g. VEGF, FGF. The fibroblast growth factor family with its prototype members FGF1 and FGF2 consists to date of at least 22 known members. Most are single-chain peptides of 16 to 18 keta and display high affinity to heparin and heparan sulfate. In general, FGF stimulate a variety of cellular functions by binding to cell surface FGF receptors in the presence of heparin proteoglycans. The FGF receptor family is composed of seven members, and all the receptor proteins are single-chain receptor tyrosine kinases that become activated through autophosphorylation induced by a mechanism of FGF-mediated receptor dimerization. Receptor activation gives rise to a signal transduction cascade that leads to gene activation and diverse biological responses, including cell differentiation, proliferation, and matrix dissolution, thus initiating a process of mitogenic activity critical for the growth of endothelial cells, fibroblasts, and smooth muscle cells. FGF1 unique among all 22 members of the FGF family, can bind to all seven FGF receptor subtypes, making it the broadest acting member of the FGF family, and a potent mitogen for the diverse cell types needed to mount an angiogenic response in damaged tissues, where upregulation of FGF receptors occurs. FGF1 stimulates the proliferation and differentiation of all cell types necessary for building an arterial vessel, including endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells. This fact distinguishes FGF1 from other proangiogenic growth factors, such as vascular endothelial growth factor, which primarily drives the formation of new capillaries. Physiology Besides FGF1, one of the most important functions of fibroblast growth factor 2 is the promotion of endothelial cell proliferation and the physical organization of endothelial cells into tube-like structures, thus promoting angiogenesis. FGF2 is a more potent angiogenic factor than VEGF or PDGF, however, it is less potent than FGF1. As well as stimulating blood vessel growth, AFGF and BFGF are important players in wound healing. They stimulate the proliferation of fibroblasts and endothelial cells that give rise to angiogenesis and developing granulation tissue, both increase blood supply and fill up a wound space slash cavity early in the wound healing process. Vascular endothelial growth factor has been demonstrated to be a major contributor to angiogenesis, increasing the number of capillaries in a given network. Initial in vitro studies demonstrated bovine capillary endothelial cells will proliferate and show signs of tube structures upon stimulation by VEGF and BFGF, although the results were more pronounced with VEGF. Upregulation of VEGF is a major component of the physiological response to exercise and its role in angiogenesis is suspected to be a possible treatment in vascular injuries. In vitro studies clearly demonstrate that VEGF is a potent stimulator of angiogenesis because, in the presence of this growth factor, plated endothelial cells will proliferate and migrate eventually forming tube structures resembling capillaries. VEGF causes a massive signaling cascade in endothelial cells. Binding to VEGF receptor 2 starts a tyrosine kinase signaling cascade that stimulates the production of factors that variously stimulate vessel permeability, 
proliferation slash survival, migration, and finally differentiation into mature blood vessels. Mechanically, VEGF is upregulated with muscle contractions as a result of increased blood flow to affected areas. The increased flow also causes a large increase in the mRNA production of VEGF receptors 1 and 2. The increase in receptor production means muscle contractions could cause upregulation of the signaling cascade relating to angiogenesis. As part of the angiogenic signaling cascade, NO is widely considered to be a major contributor to the angiogenic response because inhibition of NO significantly reduces the effects of angiogenic growth factors. However, inhibition of NO during exercise does not inhibit angiogenesis, indicating there are other factors involved in the angiogenic response. The angiopoietins, ANG1 and ANG2, are required for the formation of mature blood vessels, as demonstrated by mouse knockout studies. ANG1 and ANG2 are protein growth factors which act by binding their receptors, TI1 and TI2. While this is somewhat controversial, it seems that cell signals are transmitted mostly by TI2, though some papers show physiologic signaling via TI1 as well. These receptors are tyrosine kinases. Thus, they can initiate cell signaling when ligand binding causes a dimerization that initiates phosphorylation on key tyrosines. Mechanical stimulation Another major contributor to angiogenesis is matrix metalloproteinase. MMPs help degrade the proteins that keep the vessel walls solid. This proteolysis allows the endothelial cells to escape into the interstitial matrix as seen in sprouting angiogenesis. Inhibition of MMPs prevents the formation of new capillaries. These enzymes are highly regulated during the vessel formation process because destruction of the extracellular matrix would decrease the integrity of the microvasculature. Chemical Stimulation Delta-like ligand 4 is a protein with a negative regulatory effect on angiogenesis. DLL4 is a transmembrane ligand, for the notch family of receptors. Overview Class 3 semaphorins regulate angiogenesis by modulating endothelial cell adhesion, migration, proliferation, survival, and the recruitment of pericytes. Furthermore, Semaphorins can interfere with VEGF-mediated angiogenesis since both SCMA3S and VEGF-A compete for neuropilin receptor binding at endothelial cells. The relative expression levels of SCMA3S and VEGF-A may therefore be important for angiogenesis. Angiogenesis inhibitor can be endogenous or come from outside as drug or a dietary component. FGF Angiogenesis may be a target for combating diseases characterized by either poor vascularization or abnormal vasculature e.g. heart disease sufferers. Application of specific compounds that may inhibit or induce the creation of new blood vessels in the body may help combat such diseases. The presence of blood vessels where there should be none may affect the mechanical properties of a tissue, increasing the likelihood of failure. The absence of blood vessels in a repairing or otherwise metabolically active tissue may inhibit repair or other essential functions. Several diseases, such as ischemic chronic wounds, are the result of failure or insufficient blood vessel formation and may be treated by a local expansion of blood vessels, thus bringing new nutrients to the site, facilitating repair. Other diseases, such as age-related macular degeneration, may be created by a local expansion of blood vessels, interfering with normal physiological processes. The modern clinical application of the principle of angiogenesis can be divided into two main areas, 
anti-angiogenic therapies, which angiogenic research began with, and pro-angiogenic therapies. Whereas anti-angiogenic therapies are being employed to fight cancer and malignancies, which require an abundance of oxygen and nutrients to proliferate, pro-angiogenic therapies are being explored as options to treat cardiovascular diseases, the number one cause of death in the Western world. One of the first applications of pro-angiogenic methods in humans was a German trial using fibroblast growth factor 1 for the treatment of coronary artery disease. Also, regarding the mechanism of action, pro-angiogenic methods can be differentiated into three main categories, gene therapy, targeting genes of interest for amplification or inhibition, protein therapy, which primarily manipulates angiogenic growth factors like FGF1 or vascular endothelial growth factor VEGF, and cell-based therapies, which involve the implantation of specific cell types. There are still serious, unsolved problems related to gene therapy. Difficulties include effective integration of the therapeutic genes into the genome of target cells, reducing the risk of an undesired immune response, potential toxicity, immunogenicity, inflammatory responses, and oncogenesis related to the viral vectors used in implanting genes and the sheer complexity of the genetic basis of angiogenesis. The most commonly occurring disorders in humans, such as heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and Alzheimer's disease, are most likely caused by the combined effects of variations in many genes, and, thus, injecting a single gene may not be significantly beneficial in such diseases. In contrast, proangiogenic protein therapy uses well-defined, precisely structured proteins, with previously defined optimal doses of the individual protein for disease states, and with well-known biological effects. On the other hand, an obstacle of protein therapy is the mode of delivery. Oral, intravenous, intra-arterial, or intramuscular routes of protein administration are not always as effective, as the therapeutic protein may be metabolized or cleared before it can enter the target tissue. Cell-based proangiogenic therapies are still early stages of research, with many open questions regarding best cell types and dosages to use. VEGF Cancer cells are cells that have lost their ability to divide in a controlled fashion. A malignant tumor consists of a population of rapidly dividing and growing cancer cells that progressively accrues mutations. However, tumors need a dedicated blood supply to provide the oxygen and other essential nutrients they require in order to grow beyond a certain size. Angiopoietins Tumors induce blood vessel growth by secreting various growth factors and proteins. Growth factors such as BFGF and VEGF can induce capillary growth into the tumor which some researchers suspect supply required nutrients, allowing for tumor expansion. Unlike normal blood vessels, tumor blood vessels are dilated with an irregular shape. In 2007, it was discovered that cancerous cells stop producing the anti-VEGF enzyme package. In normal cells, package apparently limits beta-catenin, which solicits angiogenesis. Other clinicians believe angiogenesis really serves as a waste pathway, taking away the biological end products secreted by rapidly dividing cancer cells. In either case, angiogenesis is a necessary and required step for transition from a small harmless cluster of cells, often said to be about the size of the metal ball at the end of a ballpoint pen. To a large tumor. Angiogenesis is also required for the spread of a tumor, or metastasis. Single cancer cells can break away from an established solid tumor, 
enter the blood vessel, and be carried to a distant site, where they can implant and begin the growth of a secondary tumor. Evidence now suggests the blood vessel in a given solid tumor may, in fact, be mosaic vessels, composed of endothelial cells and tumor cells. This mosaicity allows for substantial shedding of tumor cells into the vasculature, possibly contributing to the appearance of circulating tumor cells in the peripheral blood of patients with malignancies. The subsequent growth of such metastases will also require a supply of nutrients and oxygen and a waste disposal pathway. Endothelial cells have long been considered genetically more stable than cancer cells. This genomic stability confers an advantage to targeting endothelial cells using anti-angiogenic therapy, compared to chemotherapy directed at cancer cells, which rapidly mutate and acquire drug resistance to treatment. For this reason, Endothelial cells are thought to be an ideal target for therapies directed against them. The mechanism of blood vessel formation by angiogenesis is initiated by the spontaneous dividing of tumor cells due to a mutation. Angiogenic stimulators are then released by the tumor cells. These then travel to already established, nearby blood vessels and activates their endothelial cell receptors. This induces a release of proteolytic enzymes from the vasculature. These enzymes target a particular point on the blood vessel and cause a pore to form. This is the point where the new blood vessel will grow from. The reason two more cells need a blood supply is because they cannot grow any more than 2 to 3 mm in diameter without an established blood supply which is equivalent to about 50 to 100 cells. Angiogenesis represents an excellent therapeutic target for the treatment of cardiovascular disease. It is a potent, physiological process that underlies the natural manner in which our bodies respond to a diminution of blood supply to vital organs, namely the production of new collateral vessels to overcome the ischemic insult. A large number of preclinical studies have been performed with protein, gene, and cell-based therapies in animal models of cardiac ischemia, as well as models of peripheral artery disease. Reproducible and credible successes in these early animal studies led to high enthusiasm that this new therapeutic approach could be rapidly translated to a clinical benefit for millions of patients in the Western world suffering from these disorders. A decade of clinical testing both gene and protein-based therapies designed to stimulate angiogenesis in underperfused tissues and organs, however, has led from one disappointment to another. Although all of these preclinical readouts, which offered great promise for the transition of angiogenesis therapy from animals to humans, were in one fashion or another, incorporated into early-stage clinical trials, the FDA has, to date, insisted that the primary endpoint for approval of an angiogenic agent must be an improvement in exercise performance of treated patients. MMP DII4 Class 3 semaphorins Chemical inhibition these failures suggested that either these are the wrong molecular targets to induce neovascularization, that they can only be effectively used if formulated and administered correctly, or that their presentation in the context of the overall cellular microenvironment may play a vital role in their utility. It may be necessary to present these proteins in a way that mimics natural signaling events, including the concentration, spatial and temporal profiles, and their simultaneous or sequential presentation with other appropriate factors. Angiogenesis is generally associated with aerobic exercise and endurance exercise. While arteriogenesis produces network changes that allow for a large increase in the amount of total flow in a network, 
Angiogenesis causes changes that allow for greater nutrient delivery over a long period of time. Capillaries are designed to provide maximum nutrient delivery efficiency, so an increase in the number of capillaries allows the network to deliver more nutrients in the same amount of time. A greater number of capillaries also allows for greater oxygen exchange in the network. This is vitally important to endurance training, because it allows a person to continue training for an extended period of time. However, no experimental evidence suggests that increased capillarity is required in endurance exercise to increase the maximum oxygen delivery. Overexpression of VEGF causes increased permeability in blood vessels in addition to stimulating angiogenesis. In wet macular degeneration, VEGF causes proliferation of capillaries into the retina. Since the increase in angiogenesis also causes edema, blood and other retinal fluids leak into the retina, causing loss of vision. Anti-angiogenic drugs targeting the VEGF pathways are now used successfully to treat this type of macular degeneration. Quantifying vasculature parameters such as microvascular density has various complications due to preferential staining or limited representation of tissues by histological sections. Recent research has shown complete 3D reconstruction of tumor vascular structure and quantification of vessel structures in whole tumors in animal models. Application in Medicine Angiogenesis as a therapeutic target Tumor angiogenesis Formation of tumor blood vessels Angiogenesis for cardiovascular disease Exercise Macular degeneration Quantification